And this woman has some incredible revelations and testimonies that she's walked through. So would you guys all do me a favor? Number one, would you open up your ears to hear? Would you open up your heart to receive? And number two, can we welcome again Pastor Melissa? Awesome. Let me take that. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. All right. So, uh, as some of you may know, my name is yeah, my name is Melissa. I'm uh, pastor uh, uh, alongside my husband. And if I can be completely transparent with you, I, I thought, should I or should I not share this? And I think if I don't share it, I take away uh, giving glory to God. So uh, we had a, a really rough night last night. A little pop-up happened, uh, emergency, but we stood on God's word and we prayed and, and, uh, and God came through like he always does just on time. And so I didn't prepare for today. And this morning, I was like, all right, God, what do you want to say? Use me. What do you want to say? Because I have a lot to say, God, but what do you want to say? And he deposited a word in my heart, and I pray that it was uh, that it was that that it is intentional for some, if not all of you here today. And it's actually a foundational scripture that I live my life by, that we live our life by, um, before we met each other, and then we came together as husband and wife, and that's a, a scripture that our life is founded on. And so, um, with that being said, and some of you guys might might have heard this scripture, but um, I want to uh, shine it, it, shine different light on it, and just show you a few things that the Lord has revealed to me and continues to reveal to me. And so, before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and, and pray. Father God, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you that we live in a country, Lord, where we have free access to it at any time, God, with little to no persecution, God, and that is a privilege that we don't take for granted. So as we unfold your word, I thank you, Jesus, that you speak to us directly, that it is not the word, us reading the word more than the word reading us. So speak to us today, God. May our lives be changed forever. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so this is a scripture that... Uh, uh, that is it's, it's common and so this is found in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you one scripture and it's jam packed I love it Matthew 6 33 if anybody's taking notes or wants to look it up on their Bible app or a uh, hard copy of, of your Bibles and when, I, when the Lord deposited the scripture in my heart too, I was like, okay, like, what do you want to say? And I felt like the Lord said, question to ask, how do you know what you're seeking? Right? Because the first word on the scripture says, seek, seek first. Well, the Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 21, that where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So that's a good indicator to know what you're seeking. Off the bat, where you spend your time and where you spend your money. That's where, that's what you're seeking first. Some of us, that means um, a relationship. Some of us are are trying to hurry up and find a, a summer job so we can, you know, so we can stack stack up some money where uh, we're paying our Amazon subscription or like our Netflix s subscription because we're doing that all the time. We wake up and we can't wait for the next show or the or the next thing or or that you know Amazon delivery to be dropped. Whatever it is, where you spend your time. And where you spend, in some cases, your money, that's what you're seeking first. The Bible says it. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so the next question I want to ask is, why are you seeking these things first? If it's not God, why are you seeking these things first? And I truly believe that God created all of us with a desire in our heart to find something and we don't always know what that is so we go after these things we go after that relationship we chase that guy we chase that girl we chase that title we we um, strive to be like the best at everything because we want this desire to be fulfilled in us and if and 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 we think that we have to work for it we have to work for that thing but I love this scripture because it says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you now you have to work for it. So following God first means that you have access to things that the world has to run for and get and strive and hustle and cry and weep and fall back and get. And we, by seeking God first and his righteousness, these things get added to us. Sometimes we don't even have to work for them. 
It's like it doesn't make sense, but that's the kingdom of God when you follow him and his righteousness. And so take a look at your life. I, I, I want to encourage you, those of us here that are following the Lord, take a moment and think about the things that have been added to your life. That when you look at your friends, that when you might even look at your relatives or strangers that you know are not living for the Lord, take a look at the things that you have in your life, the provision, the roof over your head, the peace, the rest, right? Um, and take a look. There's, there's favor when you walk with the Lord and God adds these things to you and other people are like running after, like they're, they're hustling, they're trying to get it, but they're not putting God first, so they have to work extra hard. They have to swim against the current, some might say. But God says in his word that he adds these things to us. And another question I want to ask you is, why seek? Why does God say seek first? And I found it so interesting. I looked up the literal definition of seek, and it's a verb, and it's an action required to attempt to find something. It's, an, it's a verb. That means that you have to do it. It's a choice. And if you've been here for the last two weeks, I tell you that Jesus is a gentleman, and he always extends an invitation. He's not pushy. He doesn't barge in. He doesn't break in. It's an invitation. Seek first action required you have to make a choice you have to make that choice to say I'm going to seek you God and how do you do it you get in the word you get in the word you continue coming to service you continue coming to our events during the week yeah we have fun but we're here for Jesus we're not here trying to trick you into something no we're here for Jesus we have fun we like to have a great time <laughs> but we're here because we love the Lord and we want to go deeper and so the next word in that scripture says, seek first. And I wanted to break this down for you guys because a while back when I, when I saw that scripture, I'm like, all right, bet first. Like when I wake up in the morning, that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go and do like the next thing on my to-do list, right? I'm going to go do my chores. I'm going to go put gas in my car. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. But I already, I already gave Jesus a little bit of time in the, in the beginning. So like, I'm good. Like that's first. And then the Lord revealed to me, that it means first in every area of your life. Not first in a sequential order. Not first like first period is history and then you go to math and then you go to... It. Not that kind of first. He's not an order. He's not a number. He's not a, a, a box you check off. But you seek him first. Proverbs uh, chapter 3 verses 5 through 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your, under, on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. In all your ways acknowledge him. So that means that it doesn't, seeking God first doesn't mean, uh, you know, first, uh, first God, then family. Uh, first God, then school. First God, then work. First God, then, you know, it means in my family, my role as a daughter, as a son, as a brother, as a sister, as a cousin God, what are you saying? I'm going to seek you first when it comes to my family. As the summer approaches and we're like, I don't know what to do. Should I take summer school? Should I get a job? What is my next? God, what do you say? I'm going to seek you first, God. In all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you. And the word says that he shall direct your path. So sometimes we have questions and we're like, I don't know what to do next. Let me ask you something. Are you, are you seeking God first? And it's not always going to be a straight answer like, oh, um, yes, yeah, sign up for two summer classes. And then it's not always like that. But you know what happens when you spend time with the Lord? The Holy Spirit will, be give, will begin to give you, uh, uh, we call it like uh, the green light, red light, right? Like you're like, I don't know why, but I, I feel okay about this. And, if it, and it always lines up with the word. If it doesn't line up with the word, that's a clear indicator that that's not God's plan for your life. And there's sometimes where things might not seem too bad on paper or if you just think about it, having a, it doesn't seem bad, but there's just something that you're like, it just doesn't feel right. But if you're seeking God first, that discernment, that knowing, it'll increase. Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit shows us things to come. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. Right? So I want to encourage you guys, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness it's not in order. It means in every area of your life, God is first. All right? And then you're like, okay, got it. But what is, 
what is righteousness? Because it's seek first the kingdom of God, and then the scripture says, and then his righteousness. What the heck and bob is righteousness? In layman's terms, in good old English, having right standing with God. There's a question that I ask myself, and I, I always did it just like in my head, and then me and Adam and I started dating, and then we got married, and I told him, hey, and we'd come across these situations, and we'd be like, I don't know what to do, or we get all like worked up with our emotions because we're, we need Jesus just as much as anybody in this room does. And it's very simply put, we would, ask, we would ask ourselves, in this situation, how am I loving and honoring God and how am I loving the people around me? You might say, okay, what, why? What, what, does that, what does that matter? Well, because in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. Jesus says, "Those are the, if you do nothing else, those are the two greatest commandments. Love God with all of you. Love people. So how do you know if you're right standing with God? Ask yourself that question. In this situation, God, I don't know what to do or I don't know what decision to take. But God, how can I be in right standing with you according to your word? Which means in this situation, God, how can I love you and honor you and also be mindful of the people around me and love them too? That's standing and that's uh, seeking God's righteousness. And then my favorite part about God. The second, one of my favorite things about God. That scripture says, after that it says, and all these things will be added to you. Did you know that God is a God of absolutes? That when he says, I will, it means that he will. <laughs> and when he says all, that means all. And sometimes we have doubt because people in our lives have maybe, maybe they haven't kept their word right? Or, or we had expectations of, some, of something coming through because someone gave us a word and they felt, hey, listen, that's, that's what happens with people. But God is perfect. He is all-knowing. And the Bible even teaches us that, that God is not a son of man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Which means, if God said it, he's not lying. And if God said it, there's nothing that's going to make him change his mind to take back what he said. He's an absolute kind of God. So sometimes when I'm reading the Bible and I find a word like all or will or shall or like absolute words, I get so stoked because I'm like, all right, this is good. This you're I didn't say God, you said it. So like, let's go. So I my Bible has like all will, like all highlighted. And I love it. I love it because I get to stand on that. And so in this scripture, this one scripture at the end of it, we have two absolutes in that scripture. It says, and all these things will be added to you, all, everything, and will. So we have all and will. I think God's really trying to convince us that when we seek him first and his righteousness, that he's got our back. You know, sometimes when the plane is flying, have, have you guys been on a plane? Have you guys flown anywhere? No one? Some of you? Okay, cool. Sometimes, depending on the direction, and I'm not all that smart when it comes to like physics and all that stuff, but I know this. <laughs> sometimes when you're flying, um, you you get there a little bit faster, and then like on the way back, they say, oh, it's gonna take us a little bit longer. You're like, what's the same distance? Why does that matter? Well, sometimes a plane, you're flying against the wind, so it's a little bit of resistance. And other times you're flying with the wind, so you get, you get there a little bit faster. And that's the, uh, that's, that's, a, that's the thing here with God. It says when you seek, when you seek uh, His righteousness, when you seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, all, the thing, all these things will be added to you. Imagine you're in a plane and the wind is, is going with you to pushing you. That's what added to you means. When you seek His kingdom and His righteousness. So if you're not convinced with awe and will, I pray that the Lord keeps highlighting absolute words in the Bible as you guys are reading, because he is a promise-keeping God. And, um, so sorry, I'm, here we go, okay. 
And then um, to couple that, I wanted to I wanted to share something with you because I think sometimes we can get like a little bit carried away. It's like, okay, well, God's going to add these things to me. What are those things? And then we like, we we start wishing for things, right? And it's like, oh, God's going to come through. He's going to give me like those fresh shoes or, or, you know, that car or that house or whatever, right? But in Psalm 37, 4, it teaches us, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself also on the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So the desires of your heart don't come from delighting yourself in the world, delighting yourself on Instagram, on TikTok, on what's trending. It says delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your of, of your heart. That means at first you have to be spending time with God, because right there is where those desires are birthed. So if you're spending time on, on TikTok, on IG, right? And you see the next cool thing, you see that that hot guy or that hot girl, and you're like, that's what I want, God, can you have you? No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> that is not delighting in the Lord. <laughs> and then you get all mad at God because you didn't come through with that, you know, cute guy or that cute girl. It's like, well, that's not the way that God shows us, right? It says delight first in the Lord. Kind of like the scripture we're we're meditating on. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So I want to encourage you, check your desires. Where are they from? Is it from spending time in, in the word with the Lord? Is it being around other godly people? And you'll know the difference. You'll know the difference. You'll have that that check. And so, I don't know why, like, flying and, like, maybe because it's summertime and I'm thinking, like, vacationing soon, maybe, babe. <laughs> it's so funny. For our honeymoon, it was, like, smack, like, not smack. It was at, like, the peak of COVID. We got married in November. And the, the night before our wedding, we got married in, in this building right here, actually. The night before our wedding, we entered a uh, purple tier, which was, like, the strictest tier. And we're, like... Are we still getting married? <laughs> oh, what's going on? Praise the Lord, we did. <laughs> and so with that being said, uh, we all face so many challenges, right, in 2020 because of COVID one way or another. Um, but it's all about perspective. And so when I was little and I dreamed about, like, honeymoon, I'm like, oh, like somewhere tropical and, like, the beach and, like, the sand and the water. And then we got married in the middle of a pandemic and during the cold months. <laughs> so I was like, mm, all right, so it's going to happen. But... Actually, this is kind of a testimony. Uh, we seek first the kingdom of God. There's things that we don't worry about because we know we're, we're responsible and we do everything that we can, but we don't worry. We don't add that extra pressure because we know that God's going to add these things to us. And so for our wedding, uh, right when uh, somebody here at the church found out that we were getting married, they said, hey, Ad and I, uh, we actually uh, we own timeshares. And we want to bless you and your wife with the honeymoon. Pick anywhere you want. You guys can use our, our timeshare. And we're like, so cool but it was purple tear so <laughs> we couldn't go far and it was a week before thanksgiving so we're like thank you lord is a blessing you added this to us so we went to the high desert and we we were tucked away in, in the middle of, of the desert it was really nice and it was really beautiful that's one of those things about seeking seeking uh seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness first and all these things get added to you because we know that some couples and no no shame to them no no jabs at them but they spent thousands of dollars on their honeymoon stressing out how are we gonna right seek first the kingdom of god and all these things will be added to you that's not that was, that wasn't my point that was a little sidetrack that was for free you're welcome. <laughs> what I wanted to say is this added to you. The Lord gave me this vision, this, this, not vision, this picture in my head. And those of you that have been in an airport, um, you know the conveyor belts that are there so that if you're like, you need to go, like you step on it, right? And like, and it takes you a little bit faster than if you're just walking on like regular ground. So let, let me paint this picture for y'all. If you've made Jesus Lord of your life, you're on that conveyor belt. You're already moving faster or you're set up to move faster than those that aren't walking with the Lord. And if you're not walking with the Lord, there'll be an opportunity right now to do so. So no condemnation, no guilt, okay? But let me let me just paint this picture. So you're walking with the Lord, you're on that conveyor belt. You're set up. You have a place to be 
and you're set up to get there a little bit faster than somebody that's not walking with the Lord and walking on the regular, uh, on the regular hallways. But the Bible says, seek first, action word. You must seek. Now let me ask you, how many times have y'all been out the airport and there's people on that conveyor belt and they ain't moving? They're just standing there like, dude, that is not the point of this belt. It's to like, come on, move. <laughs> and to be honest with you, there's been times where I'm at the airport or I've been at the airport and I'm like, I'm running late and I'm like, I'm like cutting it close and I have short legs and I'm like, but I'm fast and it's poor. So I'm like, all right, I think I got it. And I can actually walk faster on the ground than the people that are just standing on that conveyor belt. It's set up to get you there faster, but that if they're not moving, it defeats the purpose. And I've sped and walked faster on the ground than people have been on that belt who aren't moving. So a lot of you guys are on that conveyor belt, but are you moving? Are you taking that action to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Because you could be, but you could be one of those people that are just standing there like, doo -doo 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 -doo, not realizing that you have access to get to where God has called you for a little bit faster than those that aren't walking with the Lord, those that, have, that aren't living a life surrendered to Jesus. There's a benefit, y'all. You're on a conveyor belt designed to get you there quicker. Are you moving? Are you walking? I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you with that. So as we... Um, as we, um, as we wrap up here, I want to encourage you with these things. Take this scripture. Meditate on it. Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And ask God to show you. God, what am I seeking right now? And you know, God's not a God that, that'll make you feel all, like, bad and guilty for, like, hey, uh... You're seeking all other things. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I just get away. I don't, I don't want to deal with you right now. He's not like that. He'll kindly show you. The word says that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. So when we realize, dang it, God, I've been seeking other things first, but you're so good, it actually creates a desire in your heart to turn from those things. And some of us have to do it all the time. Some, sometimes I have to, like, uninstall for my phone, like Instagram and, and Pinterest and, like, YouTube. Because, like, they're not bad, right? But I'm spending, like, hours on it without even noticing. Like, not sitting down hours. I'd love to I'd be in trouble if I sit down and spend hours there. But, like, at the end of the day, I'm like, dang, I was scrolling on there for such a long time. I'm like, what did I get? And then while I'm there, I find myself comparing. I find myself looking at these things and wanting those things. The desires start coming in. Me and Ed and I like to watch a lot of home renovation shows. We sound old home. We're not old, we're young, we're cool. <laughs> but we like watching like fixer upper, so like you get a house, it's all beat up, and you fix it up, you're like, so cool. Kind of what God does with us, right? You get here, we're all beat up, and he like renovates us, and it's like, let's go. We love watching those shows. But there was a season not too long ago where we were watching, we were watching um, Flipper Flop a lot, and suddenly, we were like spending hours at Ikea, like trying to decorate, right? The way that we were getting inspired, Ad and I suddenly uh, had an urge to like start doing like work, to renovate houses. And that's not bad, but is that what God has called us to do? It's not bad. So if the enemy can't, can't um, take you out because you know God is real and you know Jesus is Lord, he'll try to steal your time. To try to get your attention just a little bit uh, uh, and get you distracted on something else. Get desires from what you're looking at into your heart and you're going to want those things instead of what God has designed for you. And so I want to encourage you all this week with that scripture, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And ask God, what am I seeking? Show me, Lord. Show me, God, how to put you first. What does that look like? Again, not in sequential order. Not God first, then this. God first in every single area of your life. And then declare over your life. God, your word says that you will add all these things to me. Your word says it, God. 
and watch God begin to move in your life. Watch as as you look over to your, and this is not a comparison, this is not to make, we're not better than the person next to us, that's not what I'm saying. But watch how God accelerates you and gets you things that other people are hustling and bustling for because you're on the conveyor belt and that's Jesus pushing you towards what you are destined to go to, what you're created for. tell you it's so worth it it's so worth it because you might start off saying well there's a lot of things that I need so God I'm gonna I'm gonna seek you first in your kingdom because there's things that I need we can start off that way but let me tell you after a while when you get so focused on Jesus his kingdom his righteousness you kind of forget about all the things that you need because he is sufficient and then favor shows up and you're like what the heck seek first his kingdom and then blessing starts to pour out you're like what ah it's because I seek first his kingdom it's so worth it y'all it's so worth it I want to give an invitation to anybody who hasn't made that decision in their life yet so as we close I want to ask everybody to just Close your eyes and and bow your head and take a moment. Take a moment to ask God, would you show me, God, the areas in my life where I'm not putting you first, where I'm not seeking you, where I'm not taking that action to walk towards you, God? And no condemnation, no guilt. You know what those things are. And would you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for showing me this, God, because now I know what I have to turn from and who I have to turn to. And so today, God, I choose to put you first in every area of my life. Not just my day on a routine, on a checklist, but I choose to seek you first, God. When it comes to my family, when it comes to my future, I choose to seek you first, God, in your kingdom. And I know, God, that I don't have to worry about anything because your word tells me that you will add all these things to me, God. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're constantly inviting us to more. You're constantly inviting us to trust you more, to go deeper with you, God. And that you've waited patiently. You continue to wait patiently if we haven't said yes to you, God. But we know there's more. And we're excited because now we know that through your word, it shows us that we have an advantage, God, that you add things to us that people have to struggle for, God. So show us, reveal to us, that conveyor belt in our life. And if we're not walking, God, give us the will and the courage to walk on that conveyor belt, God, to walk and get to where you're calling us. Not faster, not running, but knowing that we have an advantage to those, God, who don't know you yet. And I wanna ask you, Lord, right now, as you're ministering to us, as you're softening our hearts, as you're showing us these areas of our life, And I believe God, Jesus himself, is extending an invitation as a gentleman. He's knocking. He waits patiently outside. And he's asking, hey, son, hey, daughter, are you ready to follow me? And if that invitation is for you with every eye closed and every head bowed, Go ahead and look up at me. I see you. I see you. I see you. God sees you. And to anybody that didn't look up, but you're saying yes under your breath, or you're saying yes again, I 
want to encourage you to watch God be 